Alright, from here we're good. Alright, so I'm gonna unblock the traffic and then we'll start formally on one, two, three. I'll try not to run anyone over. <laughs> that, that's a new one for you, right? <laughs> it's like, oh my god, it's like but hopefully one day you're gonna say, ah, that was this one time on PFL, a crazy Brazilian got me on his car. <laughs> uh. How are you? Big honor for me today. Hello. I'm a big fan. Uh, how are you? Very, very good. Thanks. Yeah. How uh, how are we doing with the uh, with the PFL? I'm very good friends with uh, Eduardo, and I I know a lot of backstage. And I tell him like P PFL, it's one of my favorite events. It's not just because uh, he's a good friend. It's, it's, I like martial arts, so it's it's like we cannot deny. UFC is the largest league, but PFL, it's it's a good second place, far ahead of everyone else in my in my opinion. And I was so happy that that you were there and do your thing now. Yeah, I'm, I, it's been very very exciting and fun to be a part of this organization, see them grow as quickly as they've grown, and you know, starting PFL Europe. This, this, That's this right. Season, yep. uh, adding and just continuing to develop great talent. Obviously, we're here for the Challenger Series. You know, there'll be eight. This is the second of eight of those Challenger Series shows, which is a huge project, right? Like yeah. this, developing fighters, right? Because I, I think that's the they don't want to. No one wants to be that league that brings like retired uh, fighters from from the UFC. Well, I mean, you got to develop some talent. Everybody right? has a career arc. You're yep. on your way up, or you're cresting over. You're coming down the backside yep. of your career. That's just how it is. And you know, it's a great time to be in the sport of mixed martial arts right now because there's a lot of places to fight. That's right. A lot of opportunities to show your skill sets and, and exactly. go out and be a professional athlete in this society. So, and it's, I think that's a huge thing. And uh, the PFL is certainly doing a great job. They created a format uh, that we're all used to. It's the traditional sports format with a the, regular the season, tournament too. It's so a, exciting. A playoff and and a championship every single year. You know, you get to follow the people you like or you don't like through a whole season. That's, uh, and, and that, root, that's really good yeah. against them. And yeah, yeah. Really get to know them and. Um, I think what's been most impressive has been the fighters embracing the grind, frankly. You know, in, in the regular season, you're turning around about every seven or eight weeks and That's crazy, fighting right? yeah. again. But there's a regularity to that. You know when your next fight is. You know who you're fighting and where you're fighting. And uh, most of the fighters don't like waiting for that phone to ring. You know, when's the That's true, too. Call? Yeah. You know, when's my next fight? Yeah. You know, could be next year. You don't know. It's, uh, we're all trying to make a living, so... Exactly. It, it's that that you said something very uh, right on the nail with this. Uh, they know they're gonna fight three, four, five times in one year. So yeah. that, that's a good job. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, right? look, you, you look at like Carlos Leal or Delano Taylor, who came through this Challenger series. Yes. That, you know, that was at least one. And I think in Leal's uh, situation, he fought two other times besides the regular season that's and the playoffs. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's it's a lot, uh, but. Then they take it in stride. They front load their camps. They plan it out. And Just what happened with uh, Mateus uh, last year? With who? With uh, Mateus from Brazil, oh, Mateus the, the, the yeah. heavyweights. Like, yeah. The, the, the opportunity just literally fell on his lap. Yeah, like, hey, he I'm in full for advantage it. of it. He did yeah. a great job. Yeah. He had some great fights. He was fun to watch. How is this? Uh, commentary thing for you because it looks so natural like you, you've been doing it all your life it, well you know i did do it for for fox in the ufc uh -huh, for, yeah. for a while and that stretch where, where i had retired for a little bit and uh i feel like we as fighters see a lot of the subtle nuances yeah but the it's athletes but and, the communication part of it, it it's it's that, a gift it, now and not everyone yeah has. well and you know i think working with sean and kenny i think we, we 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 have fun. Yeah, yeah we're we're having a, a good camera. time. Yeah. We know the sport. Sean has done an, an amazing job of, of an immersing himself as a as a great commentator. He was he was the fighter, right? Like yeah. like he just fought yeah. like a couple of years. Ago. First, he won the first season. Yeah, yeah. He was literally taking his suit off, 
putting his board shorts on that and going out in the crazy. cage and that fighting the same crazy. night. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Yeah, yeah. I kept like glimpses here yeah, and there. I was like, yeah. how, how, how's that? And that's crazy. Yeah, it's been, that, that, been that's, really that's, interesting. And he did a great job. Obviously, won the championship that year and then retired. And now he's just settled right into being a yeah. uh, full fledged broadcaster. And, yeah, I, t- I talked to a lot of the, the, the great lads. I had Leota Machida like a couple of days ago. Oh, wow. Okay. In my uh, studio. Uh, uh, and I was like, do you still have that each to, to compete on whatever? Like, uh, mm-hmm. like y- you know, like there's a bunch of grappling, like a uh, super matches now. That, that's yeah. like, you in great, you're like in better shape than, than some active fighters. So I, you know, I've, I've got to try and stay in shape. Can't roll into a set of the expendables yeah. with a guy like Stallone who's still like yeah, exactly, right? seven, seven years old yeah. and ripped and, and in is great awesome, shape. Yeah. You're not rolling into that set with Dunlops going, <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> you can go in tell your belly button is not going to be good. You can still beat you know? everybody else but and, you got to look training, good, right? The training process keeps me sane. It keeps me active and keeps me sane. But I would like to be grappling and, and competing in some of those competitions but my neck has just taken a beating mm. from years and years of wrestling yeah. and then for 14 years of fighting and and uh, that was one of the things that led me to eventually retiring from yeah. the sport i could have still kept grinding out camps and competing at a pretty high level but i didn't want to sustain an injury in the neck that was going to force me to have a surgery or a fusion and then affect the quality of the rest of my life so now i had to make sense. a rational decision and say enough is enough and it's time that, to walk that, away it's tough right yeah it especially when you when you dare competing like we, we were just talking about uh glover i'm, I'm, I'm yeah I'm good friends with, with, with won a championship at he, a very he goes know. like fights the fight of his life and next fight he retires like it's like wow he's like oh i'm not and uh cheo sonny said something once that that it, it hit me really real that was like it, it just happens. One night you're there, you say, "Oh shit, my time comes." Yeah, and, and yeah. Came and, I, and he, they say maybe that was the Glover's it's, moment that night. You it, know? Yeah, well, it's such a personal thing. You know, people want to knock fighters for not you know, for staying too long, for not recognizing when it's time to, to hang so, up. Yeah. Uh, you stopped uh, right after the Leota fight. Uh, yeah, I had made the decision in that camp that uh-huh. that was going to be my last fight. Win, lose, or draw. Okay. This was the one I'm going out on. It was time. I was 47 years old. Yeah. I'm going on 48. and uh, Coming out of the, three wins. In the right? James like, Tony fight, every old injury I'd had just flared up in that uh, camp for no real reason yeah and that was the first time in the back of my head as my no, internal dialogue was like exactly. oh maybe that's your body telling you it's time to it's do time something to else stop, right? and i think once you've started that dialogue in your head it's time to be honest and, and rational and, and really take a good hard look at what yeah. you're doing and, uh, I'm, I, I'm having such a moment here right now it's like i had i had a few guests that got me really nervous. Vanderlei Silva was one of them. <laughs> uh, Man, Hicks and Gracie right. was another one. Oh, okay. And 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 having you like just look at you right now, I was like, holy shit, it's really cool. Because like I'm an old old MMA fan, so like I'm I'm from the the the, the gold era, like uh, Randy versus Chuck Liddell, and uh, okay. and and we'll, we'll go crazy with, with that. That that was uh, your uh, biggest. Rivalry, rivalry, and uh, yeah, I think it was the first real trilogy in the sport, and and certainly, you know, the first fight happened two years before the Ultimate Fighter, and obviously the the second fight was in the in the wake of the Ultimate Fighter, you know, the first season of the Ultimate Fighter, which changed the sport and the landscape of the sport for everybody. So Mm -hmm. obviously, the the amount of fan base that that we had through the course of that reality show. I'm more than double for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, in, in many ways, that was the end of the golden era of MMA because it changed the landscape so yeah. significantly. But at the same time, uh, you know, it was a pretty important moment. I was, I was just telling Eduardo because, like, I I watched the that season. I didn't watch the finals though, but I watched the yeah. the I, I was watching that the whole season. I think it was like on Spike TV or something yep, like exactly. that, right? Yeah, Spike and, uh, was the first one. Yeah, 
willing to put us on regular television. Nobody, nobody would touch us at that. What time. a crazy time, right? Yeah. Like, and look, look where the sport is right now mm -hmm. on uh, ESPN, and yeah. uh, it was it was on Fox, and the uh, fastest growing sports in yeah. the world right now. Yeah, yeah, I heard in Brazil. Uh, I think Combat Channel, uh, they just put a post yesterday that PFL signed with them for this season. Oh, cool. I don't think it's 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 like it's going to happen eventually. I don't know if it's official yet because I didn't see anything from the PFL side. But uh, the, the UFC part ways with the, the Combat Channel, which is mm. like the fighting channel in Brazil. Okay. So he's going with they're going with the UFC Fight Pass there, okay. which was very successful. Then Kombach was kind of like hanging as a go. Shit, so they got one, they got Bellator, and now they're doing the, the PFL. Oh, wow, so they're okay. going to do really well. Right. They're gonna, and uh, Carl, uh, Carlos Zapato, uh, Antonio, Antonio Carlos, or Carlos, I, I don't remember his name. I just, I just know him as a shoe face, the Carlos Zapato. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think it's Carlos Antonio, Antonio, Antonio something. <clears throat> uh, He's on the Big Brother Brazil right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, so cool. he's like, he's really famous right now. Yeah, he had cool. a couple of injuries, so he was like, he got invited. He's there yeah. right now. He's the most watched television show in Brazil. The, and people love him. He's such a great guy. He is a great guy. He's such a great guy. Yeah, he's a, a and, uh, fantastic competitor, it, too. Exactly, exactly. How do you see this new... Uh, I, I'm, I'm saying, and it's almost like a... Uh, a funny thing to say that for you because you fought heavyweight in great shape but we always see those big slow one punch heavyweight guys mm -hmm. and I, i'm I, I i've been noticing and i and i say it on the podcast all the time that this is a trend that's kind of dying like you see like very very athletic guys like super like yeah, super like shredded and, st and stuff like like we have the Capiloza guy and the the Henan uh, yeah, Henan Ferreira yeah, too, like giant guys. Yeah. They fucking moving like a like a middleweight yeah. guy. It's Andre crazy. Delia, obviously, who yeah. won last year. Exactly. Matias exactly. Sheffield's another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. There's the it's super this agile. Trend that started right? a while ago in 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 mixed martial arts. They weren't just big guys anymore they're big guys that yeah. are athletic that have skill sets and and can move and you know it it, it absolutely changed I and mean, you, you saw guys like well certainly lesnar comes to mind but rico rodriguez and yeah. some of these guys that you know that weren't just great big guys they're you fought very, very Brock skilled. Lesnar. How how freaking <laughs> strong was he? he he's a big guy very big athletic man for sure that was crazy. That was, I think that was the biggest uh, WWE slap we got, right? Because <laughs> like those guys came fight, then comes Brock Lesnar. Oh, right? Brock, Brock like no real shit, right? Yeah, he, yeah. he was an NCAA champion for Minnesota. He, he's a legit athlete. Yeah, very. You know, I mean, those guys are legit. They, they get super mad at me. I'm not gonna get into this. They great athletes. Absolutely, you, you know, we'll we'll leave it like that. <laughs> but uh, in in so sports entertainment, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great word. I'm gonna start using that because people hate me when I talk about it. Uh, so what what do you would expect for for this season? Is there anyone? Uh, that that we should keep an eye on, like a like a maybe a Brazilian talent. We just saw a uh, Hulk from from Jiu Jitsu lost last week mm -hmm. on a Challenger Series. That was a big letdown for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in many ways, the Challenger Series is the Wild Wild West. We, you know, so many of these athletes are very talented, but they we we haven't seen them much. We don't know yeah. that much about them, and that's what's really intriguing and interesting. Now, what do we have? seven or eight countries represented in, in this show tonight. Uh -huh. uh, so they're pulling talent from all over. we got a gal from Mongolia, which we've never had an athlete. That's crazy. From Mongolia. Yeah. That's so you know, cool. What, we have 22 countries represented in last year's season. So it's definitely a, a, a world organization. They're pulling from talent pools all over the place. And I, and I think that's important. And, and it's just, it certainly signifies how much globally this sport has exploded yeah um, i i have uh there's a there's an actual good friend of mine coming next week it's the danilo marquez he fought in the in the ufc and he made a move to the heavyweight division he's like 
I don't know, it's like like seven, seven foot tall or something like this. Oh wow. He's a giant guy, has some uh, good uh boxing background. Uh, like was Stefan Struve. D Demian. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Tall, so, yeah, exactly. He's guy. a little he's a little uh he's not as tall as uh Stefan Struve, but he's he's there. And he's in that heavyweight uh pool that I was talking about, like super athletic guys, like they move fast and mm -hmm. this, it's it's just super excited to see it. Francis Nagano is a free agent right now. Yeah, I mean, exactly. there's a fair chance that the PFO could pick him up and add him Shit, to the heavyweight division. That'd, that'd, that'd be, awesome. be amazing. It'd be great. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I'd love to see him and Ante Delia. You know, hook it up in a pay per view yeah. for yeah. pay per view models. You know, our, our current heavyweight champ and and Francis. That would be a great fight. Because people, I, I love like I hear a lot of fan talk because I'm I'm much closer to, to, to the fans than fighters and events and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh and people are like, oh this guy, if that guy goes to the UFC, uh he's gonna get beat, oh that guy and people just don't understand for like a for like a Delia guy, he's making great money at PFL, he's competing in high level. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to go to the UFC. He just he's happy where he is, right? Yeah. And 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 then you put a you put a fight like that it's a it's a public surprise because the the not like all the public has his eye on him and then he goes there and make a great fight maybe even wins like Francis doesn't have a, a great uh, wrestling background the Dante it's a it's like a like a, the size of a wardrobe yeah and it's and and people just get shocked you see you see like Marlon Moraes last year I'm good yeah. friends with Marlon I, I was devastated but you say look it's reality yeah. It's a top top level fighter that that comes to a different league and it's, it's, it gets outperformed because there's talent everywhere now. That that's what there we were seeing earlier, right? There's a, a fighter standing on every street corner that exactly. wants a shot and yep. is willing to do what he needs to do to get there. Exactly, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. What is the going back to those uh, Chuck Liddell years and uh, those those. The years that you were you were the champ and competing, what was like like a like a crazy funny story that not a lot of people. I was gonna say no one knows, but if no one knows, there's a good reason for that. So, but, <laughs> so maybe something that not a lot of people know. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, those were interesting days for sure. I cornered you know, Dan Henderson, who's one of my best friends, uh, for a lot of his pride fights, and <clears throat> I remember being there. Dan had made a bunch of t-shirts that he wanted to sell uh -huh. over in, in Japan for uh, at uh, Satayama Super Arena, which is a yeah. huge arena. Uh, I can't remember if he was fighting Vandalay that, that show or who he was fighting, but he made all these t-shirts. He was trying to negotiate a deal with, with Pride. Okay. And and to get a booth on the mezzanine to with everybody else. Oh, okay, like a little shirts. store thing. They're like, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll do that for you, but we're gonna take sixty percent of what I'm like, I made these shirts, I brought these over here, and you wanna take sixty percent for me no to have a booth. Shit. So he's like, Nah, the hell with that. So we took the duffel bags out to the to the mezzanine where outside the arena where the subways dump off for the, uh -huh. for the arena. And, and I started signing autographs on shirts and, and they, all, a couple of our buddies started selling shirts right uh -huh. there on, on the sidewalk outside of the arena. Man, we got mobbed. I was sure we were going to get crushed. I Holy mean, they started fighting to get in front to take pictures and uh -huh. stuff. And, and, and they backed us up to a wall and I could see people for, as far as well, I like, could oh, see, and I was like, I started to break out. Yeah. I'm like, man, we're going to have to fight our way out of here. We got to, <laughs> so we had to start stuffing t-shirts in the bag and get the hell out of there because they were going to crush us. It the fans insane. there were crazy. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Vanderlei said that Vanderlei couldn't go anywhere. Oh, no, man. He was oh, like a, a huge big star. star big Absolutely. star. And I, and I, and I had uh, Shogun who just retired mm. as well. And, uh, it, but I, I talked to a bunch of the Hanzo Gracie, I'm a Hanzo Gracie guy. So I talked to a guy who was, uh, with Hanzo's brother, Hyen, uh -huh. there at the time. And they were saying like, cause those guys are not fighting and they're just looking from, from behind. And they was like, it was crazy, yeah, like crazy. Insanity. If you think you're seeing like 
fans on, and in Vegas for fights and stuff. But when Conor McGregor fights, that they mm -hmm. invade the casinos and stuff. Yeah. So he was kind of like that, but much more well behaved because the Japanese, yeah. like, right? Yeah. But they yes. are they are fans. Like that, yeah. they, they yeah, don't scream and break thing shit. About, but about being in those arenas in the Japanese crowd, you can hear a pin drop. It's yes, so quiet. they watch it. They they clap. <laughs> right. And they, you know they're not. It's a completely different thing compared it's, to. I'm gonna stop. Brazilian or coffee? the or the American market. I'm I'm good. I had my coffee already. This really? Morning. If I have two, I start to hover. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a, a a little thing on Instagram for some people to. Uh, I, I got a little uh, upset. I, I put something like, "Hey, send some pictures. Send some. Uh, send some. I was I was gonna do something like with your picture." And say, send some questions to the legend. If you oh. don't know who that is, you shouldn't be following this page. <laughs> then I was like, all right, I'll be nice. So look. Um, David is saying, how how would you deal with the with the crowd? Like, let's say you you're fighting. Uh, Machida in, in Rio or something like mm -hmm. that. How, what was the, the 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 worst crowd adversity you ever fought, and and how how would you deal with that? Probably the the craziest crowd I experienced, and in this particular show, I was uh, I was in the UK. Uh -huh. I was going over there as a commentator. Gonzaga and Crocop yes. were fighting, and even when I fought there in Manchester against Brendan Vera. The, cr the crowd there was very, very aggressive. And I remember when I fought Vera, walking into the arena, you know, to go to the cage to fight, my hat got stripped off my head by the crowd. Wow. So now I had to do my post-fight interview. That was a sponsored hat. So oh. one of my corner guys has to give me his hat okay. so I could do the interview with my sponsor on there. Wow. That hat got stolen walking out of the arena. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that Crow Cup fight. <laughs> Okay, come on, Can I have a large iced coffee, no sugar, and extra cream? This is a thing we do. In fact, we always stop for a coffee. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be all. All right, cool. Man. All right, thank you. Cool. My girlfriend's from Massachusetts. She oh, likes, thank you. She no, likes right, yeah. I, I, can you I'm from Seattle, so uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm more of a Starbucks guy. But uh, the, we have this debate the all the time. Coffee I like the best, believe it or not. It's the McDonald's coffee. Oh, yeah? They have huh. good coffee. I, I, there's a brand they use it. I, I don't know what it is. In, I haven't been in a McDonald's since 1999. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and that was in Tokyo. Because <laughs> they make pancakes. It's pretty tough to screw up a pancake. Yeah, no shit, right? No shit. It's uh, so funny. So you lost, you lost your... Do you see the real uh, UFC Rio that they were throwing shit at Moreno? Yeah. They, they have a different uh, rivalry. But Danny, you know, the, Danny's first fight, Hendo's first fight was in Brazil too. And, uh -huh. and I can't remember the, the Brazilian that he fought, but he won and, and the crowd kind of went crazy and tried to storm the cage and get really? in the cage. And uh. Dan was a little freaked out. He was like, man, am I going to have to fight all these people? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and he would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he would. Yeah, it was pretty uh, good. But, yeah, but, yeah that pride. crowd at the Gonzaga uh, Crow Cup fight was pretty out of control. And, you know, I'm wearing a suit and tie because I was commentating. And they're they're grabbing my suit and trying to rip my clothes wow. right off my body. It was I was like, man, I just slugged my way out of this place, yeah, too. Yeah, right? And Hiki Hoyak, it's asking... How close were you really uh, to fight Fedor? And, and he was like, I mean, sending you obviously I, I was holding Dana and, and the UFC's feet to the fire because that's the fight I wanted. Most of the rankings had, had me ranked number two in the world and him ranked number one in the world. And so obviously that's the guy you want to fight. If you yeah. want to be the best fighter in the world, you, yeah. you got to fight the best guy. So um, I tried with the UFC to get that fight to happen. They got into uh, a solid negotiation with Fedor and M1 Global because that's who handled Fedor. Uh, they came to an agreement on money, but they couldn't come to, to an agreement on some other terms like a co-promotion. The only way M1 would do that is if, if UFC would do a co-promotion. 
M1 mm. and UFC present that fight. Yeah. And the UFC said, no way, we're not putting you over. We're not going to do a co-promotion. It's not going to happen. Because they're going to end so up the whole thing fell apart. Right so then I, that's when I, I left the company to try and pursue that fight and make that fight happen. Mark Cuban was helping me. The UFC was filing injunctions and trying to keep me from going anywhere else, even though my interpretation of the language of my contract would have allowed me to, to go fight yeah. him somewhere else. So that was the question. At some point, you know, they were legally going to try and force me to spend a bunch of money and drag uh, it out uh, as long as they could to so keep that from happening. And I'm, you know, 43, going on 44 yeah, years old. Yeah. You know, the clock's ticking. I don't have time to mess around and wait and make try exactly. and make this fight happen. Exactly. So I came back, ended up fighting Brock, and 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 finished out my career, um, which honestly was one of the best contracts I had. Um, but at the same time, he, that we, fight you able- now he's tomorrow night is fighting Brian Bader and Bellator yeah. in, at the forum. It's, it's his, his retirement uh, yes. fight. I think uh, I know Coleman's going to be there. I think Hoyce is going to be there. I think uh, Nogueira is supposed to be you know, a, a bunch of. Uh, people that actually fought yeah, him. Hendo's yeah. going to be there. You're not flying? Uh, we're all going to kind of, I'm going to go. Oh, you're going? Yeah, oh, we're going awesome. to pay homage to him for his oh, career. Awesome, his amazing career. awesome, awesome. I think it's, that's, that'll be fun. And yeah. He's just one of those competitors that's, you know, fought a who's who in the sport and, you know, and some of the most exciting fights, you know, random and all, just all, right on down the list. Some of those fights yeah. were absolutely incredible. I was at several of them. Um, and that's the one fight that got away that didn't happen do you think he he was willing to fight because uh, oh i think he was willing to you fight. think I don't so think like he, he, he wasn't think he ever shied away. Away. i think it was uh, uh, m1 and his handlers that wanted certain considerations and certain things to be included to put them over and yeah. take them to the next level too and and the ufc wasn't willing to do that they got really close a few times right with uh, when they bought uh was it a strike force or the when Verdun fought him, the UFC ended up buying the event after. I don't remember now. I'm, I'm I want to say Strike Force, mm -hmm. but uh, well, they did absorb Strike Force. Yeah, and and I think was it there that Fedor was fighting? That he uh, he was fought that he Bellator fought Bellator when, when no he fought Oker took over Bellator. I think. He fought uh, Verdun and he, uh, Verdun submitted him. That's what make Verdun, Fabrizio Verdun, famous. Huh. Uh, I, I want to say Strike Force, but maybe yeah, or maybe right. W. That might be right. Yeah, a WEC maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. But they, it, it was almost looking like they were they were chasing, the, you know, like they were, they were getting the event, but they were trying to, and just never happens. It's uh, I think it's one of the to see him on a big show here. Uh, on his prime, right? Because he's a, he's a Bellator, he's a big show. But uh, and what do you what do you think? Uh, Ryan Bader, his last fight, I terrible matchup for him, I, I guess. I, I didn't see it. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I know Bader well. You know, he wrestled at Arizona State. He comes from yeah, the yeah. background. Um, I didn't see his last fight. You know, generally, if it's one of the guys from Extreme Couture on a card, then I'm going to try to tune yeah. in. One of my guys, but uh, I, I, you know, I didn't see Ryan's last fight. Who you guys have there now? That uh, that shiny and, and and Ryan's. It's a big gym. It's it's a yeah, world, it's a world a, famous. A great crew in there. We got uh -huh. a, of, uh, you know, a, a number of uh, PFL athletes yeah. are training out of there and doing their camps out of there. Obviously, Francis is probably the biggest name in there right now with everything going on and where he's at in his career. Uh, Eric and Ryan and Dennis Davis are, you know, Eric Nixick, my son Ryan, and Dennis Davis are doing a great job with the, with the fight culture and the gym culture and the nice. extreme tour. And a great team. And they're doing a great job. This is awesome. This is awesome. And uh, just so we, we finish, how do you see this? Uh, the, you, you did this very successfully, moving from light heavyweight to heavyweight and, and, and back. How do you see this uh, John Jones uh, moving up to I mean, to, John has to the skills to, to compete with the heavyweights. He's a tall, you know, lean, rangy guy at 205 he certainly has the frame to compete at, at 
I think he probably walks around at 235. He's a pretty he's the bigger than I was. Yeah, and I yeah. competed at heavyweight. Uh, so, you know, I think the real question is after three years off, now he hasn't fought in three that's years. True. That's a long time. I think that's that a lot bigger true. issue than actually the transition to the heavyweight. Division. Yeah, yeah. You got to fight the bigger guys in a, in a smarter fashion. You know where he's gotten used to just going toe to toe, you know, using his his length. I think he's gonna have to rely more on his wrestling background against the bigger guys to yeah. negate some of that size. He was never a power punch guy. He was yeah. all yeah, right. Yeah. So he's, I think you know, that's gonna be interesting technically to see how he makes those adjustments. But he's certainly more than capable of competing at a high level in the heavyweight division. It's all the other stuff that, that's yeah. more concerning. You know, is he gonna? Yeah, he's a time off. To he's own, gonna be yeah. as fast because he's, he's putting he's a bunch of weight. Yeah, well, he has a tendency to get in his own way and cause himself problems. Yeah, stuff that goes on outside the cage. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. 